these videos on this channel is just light entertaining edition for one of the most serious audio production courses. It's nine months in Skype, hundreds of students graduated from this course. We have homeworks on this course where we compare your project to the best sounding mixes of all time and we bring your quality to the same level. So it's not just like theoretical education. You are welcome to contact me to get a free trial class. How to contact me information you can see on the screen. And this YouTube channel was ranked as the second best channel on audio production subject by Fitspot in 2019. For like B minus quality of audio production you can use presets, why not? But in the long run my my personal suggestion for you if you really want to progress, uh, if you're really into audio production, you should do everything on your own. Imagine you have some issue with your mix. This part of a cake, black one, it's a problematic part. When you apply preset, your preset modifies your picture like this by default. If you don't use presets, what you do? You first of all train yourself to recognize this black part of the circle, which you don't like. Some problem here. Then you craft your skills to make some settings on the Q or compressors, you know, some attack release, ratio, you know, soft knee, residual compression time, and all this stuff. All these things you can craft by creating your own settings. While you're doing it, you compare A, B, A, B, how it was before and how it's now. You sometimes, let's say, boost some upper mid-range and suddenly you bring some dirt or noise or sharpness and you train your ability to recognize that some tools actually bring some negative artifacts to your sound. You train and train and train yourself while you craft your settings. Instead, you apply preset. Preset modifies frequencies randomly, it modifies dynamics, it modifies saturation, your volume boost may be not the best possible because it may have not correct attack, release. Did you train yourself in ability to find problems? No. Did you train your ability to move things? No. Did you train yourself in ability to recognize disadvantages of your own movements or movements on your equalizers, compressors? No. Eventually you have B minus quality, not A plus. So you have only no's, right? So your first step, you know what the problem is. Second thing, you have so many situations when you crafted mixes on with your own hands and you used so many different tools different type of compressors different type of equalizers enhancer limiters deessers dynamic equalizers multi-band compressors that you really feel every disadvantage of this plugin you know and you can say no i'm probably gonna go with this tool or this tool or you try to to a b a couple of options and you easily can say this is better because of this and this is better because of this this better in this but it brings some artifacts so i choose something else and you feel yourself confident because tomorrow you're gonna have the other mix with totally other issues and your preset will not be working tomorrow but your skills will bring the best possible audio quality tomorrow that's why you feel yourself happy and you feel yourself actually real audio engineer you already have some issues let's say around let's say 70 hertz and let's say your instrument have let's say a lack of density in mid frequencies you know, so you kind of don't really want to mess with mids, but you actually want to minimize, let's say, a bit of lows because it's too boomy. You apply some preset. Preset may have some, let's say, some low frequency boost where you em emphasize issues with your low frequencies actually even more. And then, let's say, some preset may have, let's say, some drop in mid-mid. It can be some high boost in your preset where, where you boost more highs, you kind of... Uh, make mids and lows like less, you know, it's called mirror frequency effect. You basically lose your density even more in your mix and you create even more boominess. And it's only equalizer, imagine how many different tools can bring just more mass to your mix than just equalizer. Very important skills of mastering engineer is not to spoil already good sound in mix. You know, you don't take perfect mix and you modify it in a random way, applying some presets. Uh, just by default you boost some frequencies, by default you make it more compressed or something like that. First of all, listen to this song. You don't want additional harshness by boosting high frequencies. You don't want additional boominess by boosting low frequencies. You don't want to cut any mid frequencies to make it hollow and empty by default. You don't apply additional compression because it can be over compressed. Your compressors may modify balance between your instruments. Suddenly drums become quieter, vocal starts to be louder because of your compressors and limiters. I wanted to create a course where people go out from the course to be full guru of audio engineering. We learn 
everything possible related to audio. 80% of it mixing and mastering. It's relatively affordable. You pay monthly, so it's easy to make payments. And the coolest thing, we have very powerful homework checking classes and you see results. And now you can attend one free trial class. You can see exactly how we learned with current guys who taking this course right now. Information how to contact me, you can see on the screen.